Hi, I'm Doug. And I'm Kathy. And, and this, this is Maggie, Maggie May. May. Join us as we follow the moon. Today, we are staying in South Texas and we are at San Benito at the Encore Fun and Sun Resort. And the fun part, we know where that came from because there's so much to do here. The sun part, it's been pretty yeah, nice. Yeah. But we want to show you what we love about this park and one thing you definitely need to know about this park before you come in the first time. Absolutely. Now this is Interstate 69E heading south. We're actually taking an exit at, I believe it's Paso Robles Road, exit 22. And this is a very easy park to get to. You want to merge yourself all the way over towards the right. You're going to go through this major intersection and the very next road that goes off to the right is going to be Zillick Road and Zillick Road is where the park is. While we're heading down there, this is a map of the park. Basically the ones on the right that you see with the reds and the blues, those are RV sites. The other ones are going to be more permanent type sites. This is a large park. It sure is. It covers a lot of area. Now reading the reviews, we heard that Zillick Road was bumpy. It is very bumpy. It's very narrow. Uh, people know that it's narrow and even when it's two cars passing, they uh, tend to merge off the side of the road and give you a little bit of extra room. But we'll show you in a few minutes why this is going to look like a six lane expressway. That's right. <laughs> And you'll see going across here, there's a few places like there that uh, can really launch your car or your rig up in the air if, if you're not paying attention to it. But it's just a short way back here. Uh, you'll start to see the palm trees of the park coming in there. There'll be a road comes in from the side right here. That's an alternate way you can get in from that traffic light. It's just as rough and it's just as bumpy. There's really no advantage one way or the other. But if you do come in the other way, there are signs letting you know where to make your turns as you go. Now across the road on our left from the park is this area. And it is a driving range, a softball field, and an RC airplane runway. So you've got those activities across the street from the entrance to the park. This is the entrance as you go in. It is a manned gated booth. They do give you a code for after hours, but the uh, security team was very friendly, very helpful. Now over on our left, you'll see a big parking area. We'll show you more of that in a moment, but just through the gate is the registration area. That's their main office. Look at all those trees. I know, and they're huge. One thing that we have found out that all of these, it seems like, and I'm not making a blanket statement, but I think all of the Encore parks down here, the offices are closed on Saturday and Sunday. This is their mail room. And uh, if you're there more than a month, you get a key to the mailbox. You can have packages delivered to your site uh, with Amazon, with uh, FedEx and UPS. They'll deliver right to your site. But if you're gonna have them delivered to your site, they ask you to go up and register for a key. So in case for any reason they don't wanna drop it at your site, that there's a, a place that they can leave it. Yeah. This is the laundry facility, and the, again, this is one of the few we've seen. This one had two heavy-duty washers and two heavy-duty dryers in there, uh, in addition to all the regular capacity. At the end of that building, you'll see it's L-shaped, and the one whole wing, almost the whole wing, is shuffleboard courts. 
I've never seen indoor shuffleboard courts, let alone that many of them in yeah, any park. It reminds me of a, a bowling alley. Yeah. The table tennis room also is their dart room. Good thing they're on opposite sides of the wall. That's right. <laughs> Their billiards room was being used then, so I didn't get to film it, but this is their fitness center. If you're starting to get an idea, everything they do in this park, with the exception of one thing, they do it on a big, grand scale. Yeah, it's massive. Now, this was that parking area that we saw as we came in on the left. Uh, it is parking, and there's also about a half a dozen overflow spots out there, too. So. Oh, it's a music room. Yes, they have a music room right across from the complex. This is their tennis courts. They also have a basketball hoop up there. Zoomers. This is what you would think of as having a little RC car track. This is their bigger RC car track. <laughs> and when they're racing, it's lined up. They have bleachers. I mean, it's really quite a setup. There's also bocce ball and sand volleyball right there beside it. So that's just as you come through the gate. Those are the amenities that are just right there. And that's not the only amenity center in this park. And they're hugely participated. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very active park. I went into the activity center office to get a um, calendar of the events that were going on. Their calendar of events is probably 20 pages thick, stapled. And everybody was lined up in there getting concert tickets. And it's it's amazing the things that these parks do down here. Now, this building that you see here, just about two blocks away from the entrance, this is their dance hall. That's what it's called on the map. They have horseshoes out there to the side of it. And as you walk over towards that blue fence, you'll see Rocky Balboa. He's their painted rock snake. You go in there, this is the room in their dance hall. Now this was shot just before Christmas, so you see Christmas trees up there on the stage. That floor, it's a beautiful building. Yeah. And just outside of that is their pool and spa. Is that not beautiful? It's gorgeous. <laughs> now for all the amenities they have, this is the only pool and spa there. This little building had five private bathrooms in it. Yeah, full baths. Yeah. Now we're going to go back and cross paths here with the entrance. And we're going to be going around to the, as it lays, the south side of the park. Here on the left, you'll see the Zoomers RC car track. So again, I have a bearing of where we are just going across the front part of the park there. Those are the tennis courts. And down here on this corner is something you don't see very, very often, but they have a wash rack that when I read that on the map, I thought, oh, great place to, to clean the car off. And yes, you can, definitely can do that. But there in the middle, that one with the steps going up it is a dog wash right there with it too. This is their maintenance building, but built into the end of the maintenance building is their woodworking shop. Now we're gonna make a, a right turn here and this is gonna go up the outside edge of the park. You'll see some uh, palm fronds down every now and then. I shot this uh, the day after we had had 40, 45 mile an hour winds. We had an oh, incredibly yeah. windy night. So it blew a lot of debris down, but they were out there immediately picking everything up. So the park really is kept very clean and very orderly. Yeah, 24 hours later, it was all cleaned yeah, up. They did a nice job. Now you'll come to this building, and this is their silversmithing, their lapidary shop, and a library. 
And out in front of that is the back nine, as they call it. That's their miniature golf course. Again, really nice. And things were always, the grass was always trimmed. They're always weed eating around the sites. Yeah, they are. They, uh, they take nice care of it. Now we're gonna go just around this corner. Again, something you don't see in every park. There is a barber shop and a beauty shop sitting there side by side. And right beside that is a dog park that's made for small dogs as well as large dogs, two separate sections. And it's not the only dog park. Not at all. Now we're going across the uh, back side of the park, which would be to the west. This is what we told you that you need to be aware of. These are how all of the roads are that go across the park. So if you're parking an RV, you will be driving roads like this. And some of these structures are right out to the road. Some of the trees are not just palm trees, but are bushy trees. And uh, so do be cautious, do be aware. If they offer to escort you to your site, take them up on it. That's right, that way they can help you with it. And they know where the wider roads are. Now here in the middle is their chapel. And behind the chapel, you'll see this large building. This is called the rec hall on the map. As you go in the door, they've got this little area in the very beginning, and these are all the concerts they have planned for the winter season this year. They've got a nice uh, rec area with a full kitchen, and they've also got indoor pickleball courts. It's just amazing. Yeah, everything is done big except for the roads. This one is just marked as room one, and it's just a nice, big, long room that's there available. There's also uh, a bathhouse in here. There's another bathhouse in the front building that I didn't show you, and it's identical to this one. It's a little bit older, kept very clean. Very clean, yes. And as we turn around, the building in front of us there is their stained glass shop, which I thought was appropriately named, a pain in the glass. <laughs> yep. Now we're heading this road. And again, a couple of these roads are a little bit wider. And these are the ones you'll want to have them help you find to navigate to get to the narrower roads that some of the sites are on. Now we come down here to the very end. This is a brand new dog park that was just built several weeks before we got here. And it's nice. It's very nice. There were this one and one other one that were very close to where we were parked. And we'll show you why this one was Maggie's favorite over the other one yeah. when we get there. But again, keep track of the roads. If you're walking, walking the dog, uh, and a golf cart's coming towards you, they get two wheels off the off into the grass, and you get off into the grass That's to right. pass each other. Yeah. They are narrow. They're kind of like sidewalks. Mm -hmm. I had made a comment to one of the ladies at the office, and she says, "Yeah, we're an older park, and RVs weren't as big as what they are." That's right. When you get here to the very end, again, we're on the west edge, the back side of the park. We're going to make a right here. That going off to the left actually is a road. It's not a driveway. And this is going to bring us all the way over to the north edge of the park. I have to say it was a very friendly park. Oh, super friendly, yes. And everybody, the first time we were there, we went to the, the first day we were there, we went to the dog park. And the lady that was there at the dog park was telling us about all the activities and 
this was coming up that evening and that was the lighting of their Christmas lights at Freedom Park. Freedom Park is in the back corner of the park and it's a beautiful little park year round kind of done as a veterans type park mm -hmm. normally but all decorated for Christmas now. We're going to turn here instead and go the opposite direction and we're going to bring you up and show you where the most of the RV sites are. The few back rows here are listed on the map as manufactured home sites. So we're going to come just to the edge of those. And those are tight curves going and around that very, way. Very, very tight curves. And you'll start to see on our left, these are the RV sites. The RV sites are kind of unique. Um, normally, in our, IV, our RVing, if there's a concrete pad, that's where you park your coach. In these parks down here in South Texas, the norm is you park on the grass and the concrete pad is your patio. And it's even a little bit more so in, the, in this case because they're smaller than the RV. And they do have a sidewalk on them that runs all the way out to the road. The names of the roads are all alphabetical, so it's easy to find your way through. And this is the road that we're parked on. You're waiting for the winter Texans. Mm -hmm. The grass does get a little bit soft down here when it rains. If you've seen our New Year's video, you've seen one park we got winched out of already. But this is a site, the RV, then the pad, then the car, and then you can see the hookups for the next site. So these sites are incredibly wide. And if you hang back a little bit in your site, it's okay because where your RV is parked is where the person behind you's car is parked. So it all works out really, really well. The hookups over here, kind of unique. The sewer hookup, there's two of them on this site. They both stuck way up out of the ground. Um, the electrical box is a little bit older, but it is 30, 50 amp. but the water connections are almost in the ground. So Kathy, all together, what did you think about our stay at Fun and Sun Resort in San Benito, Texas? This has been great and I do love this park. It really has been nice, peaceful. Everybody has been so friendly and so welcoming down here everywhere we've been really. Yep. And the, uh, the amenities are awesome if they could just do something about those streets. And it's an older park, and what you give up for the width of the streets, and maybe a little bit in the length of the sites, you make up for in the width of the sites. That's right. It's, That's right. It's really, it's really nice in that sense. Maybe they should water them. <laughs> maybe the streets would grow. <laughs> uh, so... We chose to come winter in South Texas this year. And, you know, if you're going to spend a length of time somewhere, you can spend a few thousand dollars on a site. Or you can do what we did and not spend anything. And we owe that to our membership with Thousand Trails and our Trails Collection Plus. We were able to stay here for three weeks at a time, uh, go from one park to the next to the next with no time out. It has been absolutely the easiest way to spend a winter. That's right. And if you would like to take some of that work and strain and everything else that goes through trying to plan where to spend a winter out of your worries, definitely give our friends Warren and Sharon Lewis a call. They will help steer you the right direction for how you travel and find the best possible solution to keep your camping budget in line especially on longer stays like this. There is a plan for every level of camping experience. That's right. You don't have to be a full-timer. You don't have to be a part-timer. They have something for everyone, including those of you who may be watching this dreaming about RVing, but you don't have your RV yet. They've got a perfect solution for that. 
So with that, if you haven't already joined us and subscribed on our journey, up in this corner at the end, we'll have a button. Click on that, ring the notification bell. That way you'll know when all of our videos come out. And if you enjoyed today's video, leave us a thumbs up. We certainly appreciate it. And thank you for following us as we follow the moon.